why do you think that books or diversity in books is so important? Okay, so you may have seen like this infographic from like, I think it came out in 2018 from the University of Wisconsin-Madison talking mm -hmm. about diversity in children's books. So there, they conducted a study, this study, their school of education, let me make sure I get it right, University of Wisconsin-Madison School of Education Cooperative Children's Book Center, also known as CCBC, did the study in 2018 looking at diversity in children's books. They looked at over 3,000 children's books and essentially it was determined that a lot of children's literature is not are not very diverse. For instance, so out of those 3,000 plus books they looked at, 50% of those books had white characters. Mm. 27% of those books had characters that were animals or some other object. Um, and for children of color, the numbers get more dismal. 10% of those books had um, African or um, black characters. 7% um, had Asian, Pacific Islander Asian characters. 5%, yep, Latin, Latinx characters. And 1% had American Indian First Nation characters. Mm. So this is important because numbers oftentimes tell a story, right? When we see um, a large number of something that indicates value and importance. So this communicates to me that uh, a ch uh, an Asian Pacific Islander Asian child is more likely to see a talking duck or a talking bear in a book than a reflection of themselves and their experience. And so if I'm going throughout my schooling, especially my early childhood primary years, and I'm mostly exposed to books with white characters or animals or trucks or ducks that talk, that may be communicating to me that one, my lived experience and who I am is not valued, or two, I become so accustomed to not seeing myself reflected in literature and in books that I start to internalize unintentionally that type of oppression. You know what's crazy is, I mean, I'm looking at that 1% American Indians, First Nations, 23 books. That's it. Just 23 books. Out of over 3,000? Yeah, out of 3,000. And then, like you say, uh, you know, we're, we were more likely to see books with animal characters than with people of, of color. So I read or looking at these stats, folks, or and actually, Cammie, looking at these stats, what, do you know where we're at in 20, 2022? Is there like an updated one that I should be trying to Google right now? I was looking for an updated one, but I couldn't find one. But mm -hmm. I, I I do remember seeing like not much has changed there. This is the most recent one. I think another one came out in 2015. Mm -hmm. So this was a little bit of an improvement from 2015. From 2015. Okay. So people see, you know, and I saw, I remember seeing this. I actually saw this for the first time back in March uh, when I was at someone's keynote and they brought this on screen. Uh, and so, so I wasn't aware of this until then. And I mean, I'm not a literature teacher. Uh, so I just, it just hadn't come across my purview, but uh, what kind of impact does this have on our young children, on kids in general, when these are the stats and, and hopefully things are better in 2022, but w what type of impact does this have when, when, when the, there's so little representation? I think it can have an impact on one's self-esteem or when you do encounter a character that looks like you, a little bit of shock. So mm -hmm. for instance, in a former role that I had, uh, we administered an assessment to children. Um, and I remember I was working with this tutor who was administering the assessment. The tutor mm -hmm. was a young black man. The child was a, a pre-K student, four-year-old black boy. And in that particular um, assessment, it was in a storybook format. Mm -hmm. And so the storybook had a picture. It was um, uh, a black father and a black son at the beach. And I remember the tutor flipping through the pages. And on the page, one of the pages was the little black boy at the beach. And that little boy said, dang, that boy's black as me. <laughs> and so I'm not sure there was a little bit of colorism there or he was just shocked. But for that child to highlight hey, this is a little boy in this story who looks like me that really stuck out to me to let me know that this may not be an image that he's accustomed to seeing. 
-hmm. in school. He was in, we were in a school setting, sitting in the classroom. So he may not have necessarily been used to seeing a child in a storybook who looks like him, let alone um, along the lines of his skin tone. Mm. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I got to give a shout out to my good friend, Dr. LaWanda Wesley. She brought this to my attention. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you this question first, and then um, I'll, I'll tell you what she shared with with me. And she, I've heard her say it a couple of times uh, when it comes to diversity books. Is that enough? Finding diver if I'm a, a early childhood, if I'm a teacher, whoever, whatever my role, librarian, you know, is bringing in a bunch of diverse books. Is that enough? No, <laughs> because <laughs> I don't think it's enough because. I have lots of questions about that. My first question would be, um, what's the content of the books, right? Mm -hmm. Are these books, yeah, you have books with lots of black and brown characters, with children of color represented, but what stories do these books tell? Are these stories that highlight um, children's humanity, their joy, um, their love, or are we highlighting their marginalized status? So the first time that uh, an Asian child sees himself in a story shouldn't be about Japanese internment. Mm -hmm. The first time a black child encounters a book um, that's reflective of them shouldn't necessarily be about slavery. So what stories are we telling and who's telling these stories? Like who's the author of this, of this particular text? What message are they trying to convey? Yeah, and that's a good point, right? Because people say, oh, I brought in diverse books. So I got Rosa Parks story, Ruby Bridges. I got, uh, you know, Dr. King, you know. So there's that representation. Oh, the kids can see folks that look like them. But yeah, but what, like you said, what story is being shared? And like you said, that should not be the first encounter that they're getting. And not only that, what about children highlighting stories of people with disabilities or who learn differently or who mm. think differently, right? That's, that's also diversity as well, helping children understand. And that's the power of books. Books can really help children um, develop empathy and understand that um, the way they view the world isn't necessarily end all be all. There mm. are other ways of being as well. And that's also important, not just for children of color, but for white children as well to understand that there's different ways of being, there's different types of people, and we're all worthy of love and respect. So going back to what I was going to say before regarding my good friend, Dr. Wesley, uh, LaWanda Wesley, she talks about, okay, not only just the stories that are being told, but also what type of occupations do the families have? Are the kids living in apartments? Are they living in mansions? Are they like, what, what are they living in the hood? Like what type of setting is available for the these characters and then the other thought is okay family structure like the traditional family structure is what you know a mom a dad maybe two kids and a dog but you know that's not the typical family structure for a lot of families you have blended families you have same-sex families you have all these different types of families should that be something that we're intentional about when it comes to finding okay so we we're saying we're going to find diverse books but should we also be intentional with again looking at occupations the settings um those type of things as well i think so and even down to um colorism as well because there's mm -hmm. colorism in children's books as well sometimes mm -hmm. in books with with characters of color. Um, I've seen the, the father is darker than the mother, um, that type of thing. So I think we have to be very cognizant of that because children, they're, they're taking in all these messages. Like sometimes I think we as adults think children are these tabla rasas, they're these blank slates. Like, no, they're, they're taking in information in the world around them and they're ascribing meaning to it. So how are we supporting them in developing their critical thinking skills to understand like hmm, there are different ways of being and that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's okay. I, I agree. I agree.